Hey, Jody here. I'm finishing up a bunch of parts on a welding lathe. TIG welding parts on a welding lathe. thought it'd be interesting. I thought you might like to see my very first welding lathe. It is quite the rig, but it worked really well. And uh, let's take a quick look at it right now. And I'm, I'm standing right in front of it. So I'm going to unveil it here. Made from an old bicycle. All right. Huh. When you, when you don't have any money, when you're first starting out and you get an order for two, three hundred little round parts, you don't want necessarily want to spend your whole wad on a positioner, not knowing if you'll ever get that order again. But welding them by hand a quarter at a time, turning a quarter, turning a quarter, that's not ideal either. These were stainless parts that needed a purge. So I, I rigged up something and it looks as rickety as it looks, it worked like a champ. So let me take a quick look at it. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's the right way to do anything because I'm, not, I'm sure there's some grounding going on here through bearings, but the bike was free. The drill motor that powers this thing was $5 at a yard sale. Everything else was scrap and it got me going. I was able to bang out a couple hundred parts really quickly. Uh, I had a Miller Sinker Wave 250. That was my first real TIG welding machine. And I actually even had a timer hooked into the foot switch on it to where I could once I got the arc going, I could walk away and do something else for a minute. It was time to make one revolution along with about a quarter of an inch. And then the crater fill, Sinker Wave 250s, this is like a 1993 model. Uh, they had crater fill on them, so automatically tapered off for me. And uh, they worked great. So let's take a quick look at it, and then we'll get into welding the parts on the better welding lathe. All right? This is a 12-speed bicycle, the rear end of it, chopped up and tack welded on a little stand. It's in 12th gear, and that's, that allows it to run the part really slowly, driving it with that variable speed drill motor. And here's my high-tech adjustment here. I ran a quarter-inch uh, piece of round bar for the driver on the, on the wheel. My torch holder was very crude, just a, a weighted piece with some adjustments on it. This has been in storage for years, so it's all rusty and seized up and everything. But it allowed me to position it just like I needed it. Here's the tail stock, just a piece of weight, piece of bar stock, and I put the purge hose right on there, and it worked. We'll take a look at the better laid setup in just a second, but right now I want to thank a sponsor for providing metal for some videos that I'm working on right now. Metal Supermarkets, I've been ordering from them for quite a few years now. And if you do, give them a call. I'd appreciate it if you'd tell them Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks sent you. Now let's take a look at the real welding lathe here. See, I've got the positioner on one end that's turning right now with a three-jaw chuck. On the other end is an air-actuated tailstock. When I hit the switch, it just slowly puts pressure and locks it in place, centers it up. Air-actuated torch holder comes right down and then I have some fine adjustment here in two directions so I can get things lined up just like I need them get that electrode the right height pointed right in the center of the joint but let's take a quick look at the settings I'm gonna use for this I'm using pulse at two pulses a second so I've got a 0.2 second pre-flow on the purge so that I get a good arc start up slope of one second peak amperage set at 200 amps two pulses a second pulse Percentage on time, 50%. Background, 35%. Down slope, 5 seconds. All right, here we go. I've got a torch switch here. Just one of those cheap import torch switches hooked up in the machine, not attached to the torch. I'm using it in one hand and feeding filler wire with the other. Just using the lay wire, 332 diameter, that's 2.4 millimeter ER70 S2 filler, 330 second, 2% lanthanated electrode. And that's just enough heat to push that puddle out to barely melt the, the, the side walls in. And there is no weld symbol on the drawing for this particular weld. But I did get a verbal request from the machinist to try to keep it flush or below flush, though that's what I'm trying to do here. I've got it set once again at five seconds down slope. So when I hit, when I let off the switch there, it's tapering down now. It takes five seconds to gradually comet trail out, leaves a nice little tail off. So then I hit the torch actuator, gets the torch out of my way, 
hit the tailstock actuator, it opens it up, take the part out, put a new part in, lather, rinse, repeat. Same thing over and over again. This allows me to be really productive. I can bang out some parts this way really quickly. So again, I've got 50 of these things to do. This really helps speed up the process. I'm only going to show you this one. Now let's take a look at the other end. This one's got a flange on it, and so it's a fillet weld instead of a partial penetration groove weld. So I've got all the mill scale cleaned off, torch comes down, I dial it in, get it pointed right into the, the root of the joint like that with a, you know, it takes a little practice to know the arc length and what you need to do there. But firing up there, I increase the amperage a little bit. I, I went wide open on the machine to 210 amps. I'm using a 210 amp machine here. And I also changed the pulse parameters a bit. More pulse on time and more background current. So I went about 60% and 60% on both of those. And that allows me to get a little bit more heat input. This, this weld takes a little bit more heat than that other one did. Again, the five second downslope trailing off and makes for a really nice looking weld on a turntable like this. Same deal, pop the torch out of the way, get the tail stock to open up, I can put in a new part in no time, and keep going. Now if I didn't have this set up, I would have welded it part something like this, just on a couple little V blocks. These are V-pads from Stronghand Tools. If I just had the positioner but not the torch holder, well, I actually did some parts like this. You may remember watching that video. I just rested the cup in there and walked the cup with no pulse or anything, still using the lay wire just, uh, just because it's less fatiguing. And that turned out really good, but not quite as good as using the torch lathe with the stationary torch holder and everything. All right, well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.